Yeah. I'm Anusha sure Kanimisetti. Thank you, Karthik Sun, for the introduction. So today I'm going to share the content about the tandem microreactor, its features and operations, and also few applications related to that. So without any delay, I would like to jump to the presentation. So yes. So I'm going to talk about the Tana microreactor, which is like coupled with GCMS. And it is main motive is like fast screening of catalysts and also the chemical process. So the background of this analysis is like, um, as you already know, like there are a lot of conventional reactors available in the market. Uh, I mean, previously, but uh, it is also having like a lot of cons like due to the increased interest of industrial success in the conversion of biomass to bioethanol. So more and more researchers have tried to develop, you know, new catalysts to convert to the ethanol to the valuable chemicals. So in order to, uh, in order for the catalyst evaluation in the lab scale experiment, they have also used reactors equipped with catalyst beds and all, such as you can see in this picture, which is like a big one. So, the main challenge is that is uh, it's like mainly of offline analysis. So one of the important factors for this research is to measure the mass balance. So conventionally, the researchers separately sample gas, oil and remining and then conduct analysis for each. So this offline analysis procedure sometimes also leads to I mean, poor result in the mass balance calculation. So um, we have conducted in an experiment to bring up this equipment called tandem microreactor. So the purpose of the study is you can see uh, the tandem microreactor. Um, you can see even the system diagrams of tandem microreactor. I'm going to explain even the catalytic bed of the tandem microreactor and the temperature profiles, programming modes, and also few applications like you know ethanol using uh, JHSM five catalyst and also. Uh, Fisher top uh, since is also you're going to see. So. As you can see, this is the overview of tandem microreactor GCMS system. So it is composed of two reactors connected to the inlet of GC. So the catalyst is charged to the catalyst reaction tube, uh, which is placed in the second reactor. As you can see in the picture. Yes. Call me there. So as you can see, there are like two reactors, first reactor and second reactor. The catalyst reaction tube is mainly placed in the second reactor and then followed by the samples are introduced from the first reactor. It can be any form, the sample can be of any form. So the first reactor is used mainly to preheat, vaporize or pyrolyze the sample. Then pass on to the second reactor, the sample where it comes into contact with the catalyst and then the reaction products flow in into the GC and to the MS detector for online real time monitoring and separation analysis. So based on these results, the catalyst is evaluated by nothing like what compounds are produced by that particular catalytic reaction and their relative distribution. So here you can see the system diagram of tandem microreactor. Uh, this is the picture of the reactor. Here you can see two reactors are connected in series and directly installed on the GC inlet. It is about 30 centimeters tall from the GC inlet. So parameters such as the reactor temperatures, ramping time and settings for other axillary devices are set through operating system. Uh, for every device, we have a separate you know, operating software where all the parameters can be controlled by yourself, like temperature and also pressure, everything can be controlled. Also, this system is equipped with a switching valve and additional reaction gas line and also a flow controller. You can see at the bottom there is, you know, like flow controller where you can manually control the flow. So that one of the reaction gases can be introduced during the analysis in addition to the carrier gas. So not only your carrier gas, any additional gas can also be introduced into the system. I hope this is clear. So uh, this is how the overall view of the Tana microreactor looks like. You can see here very clearly, like, you know, all the connections and also the flow controllers and all. So this is how the outer look of the Tana microreactor looks like. 
uh, the tandem micro reactor we have in two two modes like single micro reactor and also the tandem micro reactor i'm going further i'll explain you what are the differences between the both so as i told you uh, the main role is like the catalyst so this is how the catalyst reaction tube looks oh. like the figure on the right you can see right side that is nothing but the catalyst reaction tube which is uh, inserted into the deactivated stainless steel tube in the second reactor always the catalyst tube is placed in the second reactor so it is where charged to the catalyst reaction tube the catalyst is charged to the catalyst mm -hmm. reaction tube and also small amount of quartz wool is placed on both top and the bottom so that the catalyst bed will be like you know uh, firm and inert it will be fixed in and kept in that position without movement and also springs are positioned as well as above and below the catalyst to prevent the position from shifting so this helps to you know uh, to stay the catalyst uh, which is packed into the tube uh, to stay firm and stable and uh, powder and particle form of catalyst can be loaded as i already told you not only beads but any form of catalyst can be loaded so this is how to exchange the tube you can see uh, the left side column exchanging the catalyst reaction tube it's very simple process just remove cover of the first reactor and then uh, slowly remove uh, the catalyst tube and then replace your catalyst whatever white catalyst you are going to and then again place into the second reactor and again close it that's a very simple uh, it's not that very tough process and all so the catalyst reaction tube is mainly made up of quads as i already told you and it is very easy and quickly interchangeable and you can also visually observe what is happening you know the form of the beads and also the color change everything can be visually seen because it is like transparent so this is the catalyst reaction tube how it looks like it's almost like 6 mm oda you can see the dia and all and uh, the package uh, you know a lot of questions are raised like how much amount of catalyst can be loaded into the catalyst reaction tube as you can see the dia inside so it's always better to leave some space for the quartz tube to be placed on the top and bottom because when you fully load up only the catalyst then it may spill out or some something may happen so we always advise to load the minimal amount of catalyst required for your reaction and then followed by place the quartz tube for required the wool yes so uh, in the previous slide as i already told you there is another kind of a reactor that is available that's nothing but the single tandem micro reactor single micro reactor we call it as so whereas uh, unlike the tandem micro reactor here you can see only one furnace where uh, the catalyst tube is placed directly in the same furnace so the samples are limited gas and gasified components because uh, of there is no two reactors here you know where the vapors pass through from the first reactor then followed by the catalyst unlike that here only one catalyst uh, uh, tube is directly placed into the you know one furnace so the samples are like limited so if your customers have a sample feeding system then sing single micro reactor you know it's like bit optimal and uh, the reaction gases are selectable as i told you same here the same uh, option is available so here you can see hydrogen gas is carried out for the reduction experiment and uh, air or oxygen are carried out in an oxidative reaction so like as i told you it's up to you you can just you can just switch on the gases like depending on your requirement and these flow rates are always regulated by individual mass flow controller so there is no hectic procedure here you can simply control it manually so if the reaction gas which cannot be used as a carrier gas uh such as oxygen we strongly recommend the installation of selective sampler and also microjet cryo trap uh, because of like you know to avoid uh, certain things we recommend that so here also the same mostly the accessories are same except that only single single furnace carries on that side remaining everything is like same yeah so in this slide you can see uh, you know the how the auto sampler can be connected to this uh, tandem micro reactor we also have an auto sampler for the tandem micro reactor 
so if your samples are like you know too much like if you want to continuously you know do at the same time then maybe you can use the auto, auto shot sampler this is how you can see like you know, it, it is mounted on the kind of micro reactor and same as like the auto shot sampler it is also having the carousel the cup everything is similar so uh, as i previously told you the catalytic bed you know uh, temperature profiles in the second reactor when i talk about tandem micro reactor so there when the second reactor uh, part takes place so the thermal profile of the catalyst reaction tube inside the second reactor here you can see between you know 100 and 700 degrees uh, 100 to 700 degrees is clearly shown uh, as you can see the curves in the right side you know part so the temperature variation is is between just only that 40 mm length of the catalytic uh, catalyst bed here you can i have already told you in the previous slide the catalyst bed is mainly light between this 40 mm you know uh, what to say that length so there there is the position where the temperature variation takes place so it's like plus or minus 0.1 degrees it's not much and the maximum deviation observed is at only 400 that is also like three degrees so it can be easily cali uh, calibrated using the external temperature sensor uh, which can be inserted into the center of the reactor and very easily you can calibrate your temperature so this is also not such a hectic process so by this you can even confirm how precise the temperature controller for the minimum reactor and also the temperature fluctuations that occurs here yes so um, as we all uh, as we always tell you know rapid heating and cooling takes place so what is mean by that so here you can see the temperature status of the control or deviation and also the fast heating and cooling so as you can see here the rapid heating the reactor from you know 50 to 500 occurring in the right right side curve you can see 550 degrees to 500 so you can see the blue trace line also and also from 50 to 900 uh, degrees so that is in the red trace line if i'm not wrong yeah So after a 10 minute hold at the final temperature, the furnace was cooled. So uh, here uh, note that it took about five minutes to cool from 900 to 500. So the time required to cool down to 50 degrees is about hardly 15 to 20 minutes, depending on whether the reactor was set to you know 500 or 900. So this is how the rapid heating and cooling, cooling feature makes the catalyst reaction tube change over simple, quick and easily after the each catalyst has been evaluated. So as I told you, there is nothing much, you know, the hard process is involved or nothing much time taking process is involved. So always the rapid heating and cooling takes place. Even at the maximum of 50 to 500 also, it is hardly taking only like um, five minutes or 10 minutes. That's it. Yes, um, so, okay. yeah, so there are like, you know, uh, three modes, three analysis modes uh, are available for this. Uh, this is also, uh, you know, software modes, as I told you, we always have a separate software to control. So three modes you can see in the software, it's isothermal, linear, and also stepwise. So when I always talk about isothermal, as you all know, like, GC column only with only using GC column you can do that. Whereas linear temperature or stepwise, then you can go with either EGA that is evolved gas analysis tube or the separation column. By using those both, you can carry on the linear or stepwise. Yeah, I hope till now it is clear. So this is uh, how the operation or the features of the tandem micro reactor. So from now, I would like to talk about uh, the application part as Kim San is already going to, you know, give more and more details in depth about application. But here I'm just going to quickly talk about two main applications related to this tandem microreactor. 
So in the previous studies, many uh, like lots of research has been conducted for the catalyst conversion of ethanol. So in this study, using this new system, so we conducted the experiment of catalytic conversion of ethanol to ethylene and butadiene. So uh, this is the result of the real-time monitoring analysis that's online. Uh, the catalytic conversion of ethanol to ethylene using uh, the J HJSM5 catalyst. So that is the catalyst that we used here. That means when I talk about catalyst, that is the one which has went into the catalyst tube and sat into the second reactor. As you can see in the left side part, all the parameters and the instrument part is very clearly mentioned in the left side part. So the system consists of tandem micro reactor, GCMS, and also EGA tube. When I talk about EGA, it is nothing but a very simple tube that directly connects into the MS detector. So there is nothing that separation analysis takes place because we are not using any separation column here. So this is how the online real-time monitoring analysis takes place. Since the EGA tube is so short, it's like very quick, like only 20 minutes, that's it. It won't take, you know, lots of lots of time for this. So here the vaporized ethanol was continuously introduced into the first reactor whose temperature was fixed at 100 degree for preheating. So as I told you, the first reactor is where we have, we should always load the sample. From there, the vapors goes into the second reactor. And from there, if you place GC, then separation analytics takes place, and then to MS detector. Here, since it's easier directly, the vapors go to the MS detector. So then the preheated ethanol vapor continuously flows into the second reactor and the catalytic catalytic reaction was carried out in the catalyst bed. So uh, the second reactor at uh, 20 degree per minute, so we monitored changes in the reaction products using the MS detector. So you can see in the right side path, you know, the scale, what it represents, it's nothing but the TIC. So the extracted ion chromatograms of water, ethylene, ethanol, and also diethyl ether. So y-axis tells the intensity and x-axis tells the second reactor temperature. So you can see like at what reactor temperature, what compound is like, you know, eluted at what uh, intensity. So uh, the TIC, uh, as you can see here, it doesn't provide, you know, much detailed information. It just looks like, uh, like the normal EICs. So, uh, here you can see only that ethanol was transformed to diethyl ether mainly between 200 and 300. That's where uh, the ethylene became the major reaction product. However, above 300, that is what the main reaction product. So in order to more qualify and quantify these reaction products, so the separation analysis has to be carried out because this is just a very minimal information that can be obtained using the EGA tube. From now on, further going for separation analysis, in deep we can know more, more about the products that are eluted. So here uh, we conducted the separation analysis using the GC column. In the left side part, you can see previous slide it is EGA. Here it is clearly mentioned it is separation column. Uh, the column that we've used here is a UA1. So this is how uh, it looks like. I mean, the difference between EGA and the separation column. Most of the people gets confused between the separation column and EGA column. So EGA short wire just directly goes to MS, whereas separation column, you can see it's like 30 mm length and all. So it's big. And the coating also takes place in separation column. So this is uh, the online separation analysis using the stepwise reactor temperature programming. Here we have used stepwise as I have already mentioned, stepwise and also uh, the linear always takes place only by using separation column. Whereas EGA you can do only isothermal. So basically the same system configuration was used. We haven't changed much. The only change is 
EGA to separation column. That's it. Remaining everything remain the same, like selective sampler, cryo trap, everything same. So as you can see in the schematic diagram, ethanol vapor was continuously introduced into the reactor and to the column. So in order to avoid overload of the sample, we uh, activated the selective sampler here. Uh, so selective sampler mainly allows for switching a flow path and also selectively introducing the sample into the separation column for the desired sampling time. So in this case, uh, we have used, I think, uh, for 10 seconds. That's it. So and another device, uh, as I already mentioned, it's a microjet cryo trap, which was mainly used to cryo focus the samples introduced into the separation column during that sampling time. So after the sampling time, the cryo focus samples was vaporized again and flow through the separation column. It's just uh, it's nothing but it just traps the column. That's it. It doesn't, uh, you know, allow uh, separation analysis taking place at that particular time. So it will just, sorry, it will just trap the column and keep in hold. That's it. Because most of the, you know, pump nodes flow over at room temperature also very easily. So here we use cryotrap just to hold the column. So these are the resulting TICs of the separation analysis results obtained by different reactor temperatures at 100, 200, 300, and 400. In the right side path, you can see. So in addition, we conducted the same experiment by changing the reactor temperature from 60 to 400 degrees and plotted the peak intensity of ethylene, water, ethanol, and diethyl ether. So the graph uh, you can see it summarizes the change in reaction products by reacting by reactor temperatures. So based based on the reactor temperatures, you can see the reaction products of same. As you can see here, ethanol was mainly converted into diethyl ether up to 230 degrees. So upon that, there is nothing much taking place. So after 230, as you can see, the peak is like falling down. So till 230, the diethyl ether is eluted. And also about the temperature, its main reaction product became ethylene as well as water as a byproduct in this reaction. You can see upon that, uh, can you see the you know right side bottom part I'm talking about? So there you can see after 230, the water became the byproduct because that's what it is getting eluted and also ethylene it's getting eluted after that. So it can be clearly said that about 250 to 300 would be the would be you know the perfect or optimum reactor temperature for the conversion of ethanol to ethylene using this uh, HZSM5 catalyst because uh, you can see uh, below 230 or that you can see diethyl ether is being present so only upon that you can see ethylene and also the water so uh, based on this study we can say that 250 to 300 would be the optimum temperature. Yes. So uh, this is, as I already talked about, you know, this is the stepwise temperature mode. So upon further going for linear temperature mode, this is how the, you know, uh, the monitor analysis of catalytic conversion of ethanol to butadiene took place. So the system configuration and analytical conditions are like very similar i mean not similar same we haven't changed much so the thing only we changed is at catalyst so instead of using the jsm catalyst we have opted here mgo or sio2 catalyst i'm sorry if i'm wrong with the terminology because i don't know much about this catalyst things so this is uh, the only thing that we have changed here is only catalyst so after the reactor temperature of 300 here you can see ethanol peak intensity was dramatically decreased between 300 and 400 while the but, uh, while the butadiene is you know increased uh, ethanol is decreased while butadiene was increased so after 400 degree only Butadiene was decreased and ethylene became the main reaction product. So in the right side part, you can clearly observe the 
profile for each compound. So ethanol and also betadine, as I already told you, you can see the seeds, how they look like. Yes. I think it's clear. Yeah. So let us come back to the stepwise temperature mode again. Don't, don't get much confused between linear and stepwise, you know. So here I spoke about only the change in catalyst, that is, you know, MGO catalyst using linear mode. So same catalyst. Here we are going to talk in stepwise mode. So these are the resulting TICs observed. So by, you know, reactor temperatures between 200 to 500. So here the graph summarizes nothing but uh, the change in the reaction products by reactor temperature. So here you can see ethanol was not converted at 200 degrees of the reactor temperature, whereas at 300, ethanol was converted to different products and betadine yield is increased with water. So parallelly with water, betadine is also increased. Betadine is nothing but the red color, you know, line. You can see the red color curve. The bottom part, you can see like different colors, but in the side chart, we have also mentioned each color, which is representing what product. So red means betadine and blue means ethanol. So then betadine yield was maximized at 400 degrees of catalyst reaction temperature. So when it's 400, you can see then it is maximized. At 500, betadine yield was decreased and ethylene yield maximized. So on going further, betadine was like decreased. Till 400, it is like uh, stable and increasing, but after that, it slowly started decreasing. Then ethylene, whereas ethylene means uh, the orange line, it is like slowly increased. You can see upon going for further, it started gradually increasing. So as a result of this analysis, you can say that the betadine product, you know, is produced by catalytic conversion of ethanol over uh, this uh, bifunctional MGO catalyst and also betadine yield reached its maximum around 400 degrees temperature. So the difference between that catalyst is this catalyst is here. You can see at 400, the betadine yield is like maximized. Yes. So uh, these are the changes, you know, uh, appeared in the catalyst um, after the experiments, the number of experiments conducted. So as you see, the catalyst lifetime is also very important. When I say catalyst, you know, at every time you cannot load on catalyst and go on. So you have also to observe, you should also observe the durability of the catalyst and um, the lifetime of the catalyst. So normally the catalytic position or the deactivation decreases the catalytic reaction efficiency and the coke, deco uh, coke deposition also occurs in the port or the surface of the catalyst makes the catalyst deactivation. So these are the points where, you know, um, make the catalyst go down in the performance. Um, so as you can see the pictures of uh, the catalyst here, the starting one is like the new, the very fresh catalyst when it is loaded into the system before getting loaded into the system. Whereas the catalyst color gradually changed from that fresh white to black. That is mainly because of the catalyst deactivation. You can see after four hours and also after six hours of use. So this is how the you know color change occurred between. You can see from a very nice white uh, textured catalyst to black one. So with real, I mean, with online real-time monitoring analysis, so we monitored that the CO2 formation emitted from the catalyst during uh, the catalyst de decoking process, and also we studied the deposited coke properties also. So this is how the catalyst reaction to packed. When I talk about catalyst here, we are talking about MGO, as I already mentioned. So this is how the change appeared. So as I told that we studied, you know, the catalyst decoking process. So we we used air as the carrier gas and the second furnace temperature is uh, monitored or programmed at uh, 600 degrees per 20 degree per minute. You can see the left side part what we have mentioned. 
so this is the resulting tic uh, the um, you can see the below one is nothing but the eic of co2 surface of the catalyst so you can see that the highest yield of co2 is around 500 degree where you can clearly see the green color uh, peak i mean line peak is uh, mentioned where the combustion of carbon on the catalyst took place it's mainly at 500 degree so this is the result that tells us or that clearly shows us the catalyst coke can be eliminated with the reactor temperature over 400 to 600 degrees under air so if you maintain the temperature like you know over 400 or 600 there you can uh, clearly eliminate the coke that got deposited on the catalyst you can even see the picture of that uh, you know in the right side part we have already shown the picture of that uh, again the black one is again you know turned out to not as much as fresh but fresh white but kind of you know white So, and also uh, there is other catalyst other than MGO. I spoke about uh, JSM catalyst also. This is how before and after use of JSM packed into the quad sensor tube. That means the catalyst tube. You can observe here before the same way it is like milky white, very fair. And uh, after using it, it became, uh, you can even see small kind of uh, particles getting uh, you know deposited on the surface of the catalyst and further like you know 48 hours you can see again the black kind of particles appeared on it so it clearly mentions that uh, that is how you know the cooking of the, i mean cooking of the uh, compounds get deposited on the catalyst upon using further Yes. So next, I'm going to talk about the Fischer trop synthesis uh, by using that IU catalyst. Yeah. So the shale gas revolution has resulted in the production of you know, inexpensive ethylene, especially in countries like North America and also the worldwide supply balance of C3 and C4 elephants has been collapsed. So something there's need for technology, you know, to produce this C3 and C4 elephants directly from zinc gas produced by reforming of methane. So in high selectivity for C3 and C4 elephants, uh, it can be attained by fischer trop synthesis. So it, it is. Uh, it has become an important manufacturing process. So to get this C3, C4, and C5 elephants in a very high yield, so we studied, you know, few conditions such as reaction temperature and also the sink gas ratio by using the RU catalyst. So which is coupled with the Tanner micro reactor and uh, as well as the GCMS for all time on online monitoring analysis. So you can see here the experimental conditions for the real time uh, monitoring analysis, like what are the conditions that you have maintained for it. Yeah, uh, there's nothing much to explain about this slide because it's only the conditions just for your idea. I have given a diagram of the catalyst tube, how it looks like. The same way we have loaded the RU catalyst here. And uh, in the left side part, you can see the EGA tube directly, you know, connected to the MS. No separation analysis taking place here. And uh, the loading of sink gas taking place over the first reactor. So bottom part is nothing but what are the parameters that you have maintained for it. So this is the real-time monitoring of major products, the Fischer Top synthesis using the RU catalyst. So you can see here uh, the olefins and paraffins 
is you know production occurred between 180 and 300 degrees so very clearly you can observe uh, the bottom part that means two red color curves we have represented here the olefins and also paraffin c3s and c5s so till like you know 180 to 300 i think you can see a raise in the peak so there is where the production of uh, those both took place so we can see that is optimum temperature and uh, as i have already told you eza gives only us the basic idea of the temperature and only basic idea where the products are being eluted but it doesn't give us the further deep you know uh, details about uh, separation um, of separation of the compounds so for that we also carry on the separation analysis so these are the experimental conditions for the separation analysis here the only difference is when i talk about separation analysis we use separation column that's it. So here you can see the grams of products obtained at different reaction temperatures. So um, you can see at 180, uh, from 180 to 320. So as I've already told you, from 180 to 300 is the optimum. You can even see the clear elution of uh, the olefins and paraffins here. So upon this, uh, we have concentrated like, you know, at 240 degree, uh, 240 degree temperature. So you can see here mainly the products of hydrocarbons, I mean, olefins and paraffins and also CO2, H2O and alcohols and also some unreacted CO have been observed at 240. Very clearly you can see in the peaks like, and we also labeled at the top so you can clearly C3 and also some kind of CO also appearing here. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. I hope it is clear. So here you can see the effect of reaction temperature on carbon yields of C3, C4 and C5 hydrocarbons. So very clearly it is uh, given in the carbon yields. So right side part, you can clearly see the C3 and also C4 and C5's rays. The temperature of 240 degrees, as I've already told you. So the y-axis is nothing but the intensity. So on the right side, you can see the maximum yield at what intensity at particular temperature. So as I've already mentioned at uh, 250 C4 and also 240 C5 and 260 C3. So it is clearly shown that below 300, all this elution took place. And the CO conversion ratio, you know, the, the ratio at which C3, C4 and C5 hydrocarbons appear. So also between, you can see 240. And the reaction temperature is mainly between again 180 to 300. Whereas uh, upon actually, Upon uh, 280 or 270, you could see nothing because it's zero, whereas uh, the maximum is between uh, 250 and also 260 and 240. So as we already told you, the major scale is between 240 to, you can say, 260 degrees. Yes. So these are the chromatograms of methane at different reaction temperatures. You could see very clearly, it's like the methane yield, you know, it's maximum at 240 degrees, whereas uh, 220 and 230, it's not much. So these are the chromatograms of products at different syngas ratios. It's just only for your idea we have mentioned here. 
you can straightly see in the left side bottom part the olefin yields a different hydrogen you know mole reactions so c3 is to c4 is you know like 30 13 is to 1 and also c4 is like 6 is to 1 so they are nothing but at each eic area count we have mentioned here and also in the right side you can see the catalyst activity decreased within a short reaction time due to the carbon decomposition so you can also observe there a black portion appearance in the you know catalyst tube after the synthesis at low H2 and CO, whereas the new catalyst tube is very clear. There is no black color decomposition over there. So quickly, I think till now it's clear. I would like to summarize what I have presented till now. So as I told you, this is a very useful analytical tool for online analysis of catalytic evolution. And it is also upon that having you know various advantages because the Tanner micro reactor uh, comes with a very simple and a very small size catalyst evolution system, uh, you know, with GCMS uh, with various temperature programming mode. I already told you isothermal, linear, stepwise. So always <clears throat> depending upon your requirement, you can switch on to the different modes and observe. What are the changes occurring for that particular compound, you know, at different temperatures? I mean, um, you can go for stepwise linear and then clearly observe <clears throat> what are the changes occurring. And also the catalyst reaction tube, as I've shown you, it is very simple to and easy to exchange and also maintain because even though the some kind of coke deposition took place. So as I've already mentioned, upon 500 degrees, you can just the decoke and eliminate all the carbon decomposed prop, uh, you know, the, what to say, the particles on the catalyst. And also the quick analysis of catalytic conversion of ethanol by, you know, selected ion intensities. So you can specifically select, I have already mentioned in my slides that M over Z is nothing but the ion intensities. So you can just, uh, uh, just put on your uh, selective ion intensity into the software. We also have the software and uh, even during the data evolution part and data encryption part also, you can just quickly monitor your selected ion intensities. And also the EG in situ of decoking of catalyst in a catalyst reaction tube and also the temperature effect on the selectivity in the Fisher top senses. You, as I've already uh, observed, sorry, as you have already observed uh, the temperature uh, effect because uh, above 300, there is nothing you can see. And also at 240, it is the optimum. And since um, even though EGA showed between 180 to 300, but upon further going for linear and also stepwise temperature uh, modes, you got the uh, what to say, like uh, exact temperature, like, you know, 240 at which the optimum reaction takes place. So uh, by this, I, I, would, I think, um, yes, this this is what about tandem micro reactor. So if any questions, um, you're welcome. And uh, thank you. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sir. So I think it was a very elaborative and, and, and extended session. Okay, so, uh, dear uh, participants, I think we are running behind uh, with the time, so I uh, request everyone to stay because the second session is more important as well in terms of uh, the, the, the application and with the um, catalytic pyrolysis and catalytic co-pyrolysis. So please stay and we bear with us with the time delay. So, Prof. Kim, uh, maybe you can uh, load your uh, slides now. Yeah, so please continue typing your questions in the chat box and we will we will address it uh, during Q&A. Can you hear my voice now? Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. And also presentation file. Yes. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah, you can start now. Thank you. Yeah. So I will start to the my presentations. So briefly uh, actually, I worked in the Frontier Lab as an R&D member, I think it was four years before. 
and uh, I have so many experience from uh, Chu Watanabe. He is uh, a, a great researcher of Frontier Lab. And uh, I had a chance to uh, occupy the, the professor position in Korea. Now I'm still uh, focusing on the tandem microreactor application. So my major is the biomass conversion and also interested in the catalytic pyrolysis of waste plastics. So, uh, so katek during my presentation, if there is some problems, uh, please speak to me. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. it's fine. I think we, we can follow you. No problem. So you please take your time and, and, and do okay. it. Okay. Because uh, okay. people must be anxiously waiting for your, your, your sharing. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So uh, I think there's many researchers uh, who participating in this com uh, talk also interested with uh, the similar application together with me. So as you, everyone know, due to the, this kind of a severe, a severe worldwide issue, many people think the biomass can be the alternative energy source. So due to this, uh, it's linear liability. The many kinds of technology like a total fiction is uh, like a heat supply around 300 Celsius degree to the biomass you can get a solid bit stuff from uh, by the torpection processes. The pyrolysis is uh, our main application, normally from 400 Celsius degree to 600 Celsius degree can be applied. So in that case, uh, these uh, three major components, hemicellulose, cellulose, and lignin, can be summarily decomposed and uh, converted to the bio oil. So main target of pyrolysis is to uh, get large amount of high quality liquid product from the biomass. And also we can get a biochar from uh, by the pyrolysis of biomass. And uh, now many researchers also use this biochar as an absorbent for uh, contaminant in wastewater, even in the uh, contaminant in air atmospheres. Oh, this is citrosphere, one of the typical example. So my doctor degree thesis is related with the catalytic conversion of these uh, citrospheres. So normally the problem of the pyrolysis of biomass is related with the low quality. So when you apply the, the simple pyrolysis, lignin uh, produces the large amount of penolytic components. So levoglucosan can be converted to the, uh, cellulose can be converted to the levoglucosan, and the large amount of acetic acid and the other kinds of oxygen containing product can be obtained from the pyrolysis of this kind of wood or even in the citrus beer biomass. So researchers thinkers, uh, the oxygen content in the bio oil is very high level. So it's very difficult to be applied as your uh, pures directly. So to increase the value of this bio oil, many people consider the catalytic upgrading processes. So some people uh, just mix the biomass together with catalyst. So we call this is the in situ catalytic pyrolysis. And uh, the other people applied the pyrolysis first and uh, the pyrolysis product can be upgraded over the ex situ catalytic bed. So we call this kind of reaction is ex situ catalytic pyrolysis. So also many researchers uh, think about the co-pyrolysis together with uh, waste plastics because uh, uh, the waste plastics such as polyethylene and polyethylene, polypropylene. So this kind of product has the larger hydrogen content than biomasses. So it can provide uh, the hydrogen resource during the catalytic copyrolysis and uh, the 
target products. In my case, benzene and aromatics. Uh, yield can be increased due to the help of these co-feeding feedstocks. So another application is catalytic deoxygenation. So normally people use the metal supported zeolite or uh, metal supported carbon or any kind of supporting materials can be applied. So they want to uh, delete, uh, reduce the content of oxygen in the final products. So in this kind of reaction also can be applied by using our tender microreactor systems. Okay, I think uh, this slide can be skipped because uh, the Anusha san also explained the development background of tender microreactors. So this one also the same. However, I want to emphasize so you can put the solid sample to the sample cup. So one of the professors asked during the post webinar sections, so solid particles can be uh, put in the sample cup. And uh, some kinds of powder materials also can be put in the sample cup. So we load the sample cup to this position. Actually, this is ambient temperatures. And by pre folding the sample, the sample can meet the preheated heaters. So you can uh, preheat the temperature of this phosphorus uh, to any temperatures. So in my case, I applied 600 Celsius degree for biomass sample. So in that case, you put the sample before, the sample will be polarized within uh, several milliseconds. So this pyrolysis product can transport to the second reactors and the meet the catalyst. So actual catalytic upgrading uh, reactions can be happen to the second reactors. So you can adjust to the temperature of a catalytic bed. Uh, in my case, 400, 500, 600, something like this. Also, you can adjust to the amount of a catalyst. So this indicated you can see the effect of a catalyst to sample ratios. So the final product can be transported to the capillary column, and by the separation, you can detect the product by the attached single quadruple mass. So some kinds of special application, for example, like uh, hydro uh, HDO reactions. Many re researchers use hydrogen as a reaction gas. So in this case, you need to supply hydrogen additionally. So in that case, by using this kind of reaction gas selectors, you can introduce the reaction gas, hydrogen gas, via this line. And the hydrogen gas also supplied to the metal supported catalyst. So actual HDO reactions can be uh, happened in this reaction reactors. Also some researchers want to do the experiment together with the model components like a guaiaco of lignin pyrolysis model components. So in this case, your sample will be liquid form. So in that case, you can uh, inject the sample via this kind of syringes. And by spiking the sample, the sample will be vaporized and almost similar catalytic upgrading reactions can be happened in the second reactors. Okay, I will ex briefly explain about the uh, experimental example. So one of uh, this uh, is published with the uh, bioresource technologies. So this is background. This is South Korea. So now I'm here in Daegu city. So in the Jeju Island is very famous uh, as the citrus peel production, uh, citrus productions. So we can drink uh, delicious juice. But the problem is the large amount of uh, citrus peel we emitted as a waste. So I'm considering how we can produce the fuel from these waste peels. So I consider the catalytic pyrolysis 
and I applied a different kind of zeolite catalyst. So they have a different BT surface area, and the acid T is also different. So this is the experimental schematic diagram. So two milligram of sample, I pre-fold, and they meet the 500 Celsius degree temperatures. So first they pyrolyze it. And for the non-catalytic pyrolysis, I do not put any catalyst to, to the second reactors. So all product gets directly transferred to the GC and the separated. In this case, we can get this kind of chromatograms. So as you can see, so all of the components having high amount of oxygen. So methanol, acetone, acetic acid, porphyrol, so all of these components constitute with the oxygen element. So I need the more upgrading processes. So when we put the HDSM5 catalyst to the second reactors, I made the catalytic bed and loaded. The same sample amount was injected. But in this case, the product gas emitted from the fossil reactors can meet the catalyst. So at these temperatures, catalytic upgrading reactions can be performed. So product also different together with the, the non-catalytic pyrolysis. As you can see, when we use the HGLSM5 catalyst, this kind of aromatic components. So our target is monoaromatic, like a benzene, toluene, and the gyrans. So this yield is increased together with the decrease of oxygen containing products. So we can get the yield of product yield of uh, product yield for the catalytic pyrolysis of biomass. So as you can see, when we apply the HLSM5, the total aromatic yield to, uh, is uh, 6.78 carbon percent. Okay. Uh, also, um, please focus on this application because uh, I think uh, many researchers uh, interested in the lifetime of the catalyst. So main reason for the lifetime decrease is the cook. So after the reactions, the pyrolysis products can make the cook at the surface of the catalyst, so even in the pore of the catalyst. So color of the catalyst will be changed to the, to the dark color. So as we can see, at the first injection, the yield was a little high. But if we inject the sample more, the yield is decreased. But we can compare the lifetime of the catalyst. And also, uh, the coke can be distinguished by the thermal coke and the catalyst cook. So two major the weight of cook, some people use the thermal grade metric analyzer, TGA. However, in this case, it is very difficult to uh, see the exact amount of cook. So uh, we designed catalyst burning system. So in this case, we introduced air as the carrier gas. And the uh, uh, carrier gas will transport to the second reactor, but used catalyst is loaded to the second reactors. And the heat, the second reactor temperature from 100 Celsius degree to 800 Celsius degree at this heating rate. So if the coke is incinerated, the carbon dioxide and water is generated. So we can see the profile of CO2 production and water production. CO2 production and water production. 
for each catalyst. So as you can see, compared to the HLSM5, H-beta produces larger amount of CO2 and water. So this indicated it has the large amount of coke. So, and this can be the reason for the fast deactivations. So lifetime of catalyst, H-beta is very short compared to the HGLSM5. So I think this kind of application is very unique. So if I write the paper, the reviewers give the good estimations for this kind of result. Okay, so this is the schematic reaction mechanism. So by the thermal desorption or post primate post pyrolysis, so biomass can be converted to various kind of oxygen containing products. The if we apply to the catalytic pyrolysis, so product will be differentiated. But in my case, I applied the HGLSM5. So in this case, by this kind of hydrocarbon pool mechanism, like alkanes and the benzene, toluene, ethyl benzene, xylene, this kind of aromatic components can be produced. So we can test this kind of reactions. So I will interest about uh, catalytic copyrises. So the problem of biomass catalytic pyrolysis, the target product yield is still low, and also the coke amount is very high compared to other hydrogen sufficient to be the stock, such as uh, waste plastics. So I designed, okay, the problem of the catalytic pyrolysis is the hydrogen deficiency. So if we just mixing the waste plastics, the large amount of hydrogen in this plastic source can be acted the hydrogen donor to the system. So the yield of the aromatic can be additionally increased compared to the single catalytic reaction of biomass. So as you can see, we applied one milligram of biomass and it was pyrolyzed at 600 Celsius degree. So for the non-catalytic pyrolysis, I decreased the temperature of the second reactor to 320 to avoid any kind of secondary, secondary cracking. And also there is no catalyst. So the result is like this. So this is cook oak. So you can see many kinds of products. Normally, this kind of guaya coal cradle and single syringo. So these products is from the lignin and the popular from hemicellulose and the acetic acid. And there is levoglucosa. This is from the cellulose pyrolysis. And also, this is waste plastic film. Waste plastic film. Okay, I will show. So this one, can you hear? Can you see? This one is waste plastic film. So I copy. So when we apply the, the non-catalytic pyrolysis of waste plastic film, you can see the pyrolysis, typical pyrolysis product of polypropylene and polyethylene, even in the polystyrene. And also, I also found the, a little amount of level of so This indicated uh, nowadays many people make uh, the biodegradable plastics. So they mix uh, the starch or any kind of biomass together with uh, the polyethylene and polypropylene. So I think that is the reason why we can see this level of peak uh, during the non-catalytic pyrolysis of waste plastic film. So when we coffee, so I, the total weight is same, one milligram. However, the mixing ratio is one to one. 
So we can see the typical pyrolyzate over both cork oak and oastic plastic films. So there is no synergic effect. So like a just a mixing effect. So we identify there is no mutual interaction due to the pyrolysis of cork oak and waste plastic film. But in this case, when we apply the, the catalytic co-phyrolysis, the calculate yield, just to uh, see like this, please look at the HLSM5 cases. So compared to the theoretical value, the experimental yield of uh, aromatic components is increased. So this uh, uh, can be expl explained as the synergistic formation of aromatics caused by the co-feeding of waste plastic film to the catalytic pyrolysis biomass. Okay. The EPO, uh, any people want to know the exact reaction mechanism for this kind of synergistic formation of aromatic components BR catalytic co -phyrosis, please email to our steps. So we will share the published paper. And also you can see the list of our publication on Frontier Web website. Okay. And I'm interested to the very interesting applications. I like this kind of reactions very much difficult. So as you can see, the catalytic pyrolysis normally can be done by the uh, GC inlet pressures. However, many people want to increase the reaction pressure up to uh, 300 bar or for the hydrogenation or hydrogen deoxygenation reactions. So normally they apply to the hydrogen as a reaction gas. And the metal supported zeolite or other supporting material catalyst was used for the uh, hydrogenation or hydrogen hydro deoxygenation reactions. But in this case, the experiment is very difficult because uh, they have to use the big size reactors and they have to increase the reaction pressures and weight after the stabilizations and they apply to the temperatures and the weight and also have to decrease the reaction pressures and the product have to be analyzed in the separate systems. So our team uh, wants to realize this kind of high pressure reaction with our system. So we designed high pressure flow controllers. So by attaching this system to the tandem micro reactors, we can increase the reaction pressure up to 3.5 megapascal. And also, if we increase the reaction pressure, normally the retention time of the column will be different. However, we install the different restrictors and the, the column head pressure is controlled to the separated back pressure controllers. So even we adjust to the reaction pressure of tandem micro reactors, the column head pressure can be maintained. So this indicated the retention time is not changed on the different pressures. So also, any kinds of reaction gas can be applied. So I normally use the air or hydrogen as the main reaction gas. So some people want to use the methane or methanol vapor, methanol vapor as the hydrogen source. Okay. So this is the research background. So I think semicellulose cellulose is not a challenge for the biomass conversion. However, the lignin has many problems because basically after the pyrolysis, 
the amount of char residual solid material is very high. So Kraft lignin, in case of Kraft lignin, uh, around uh, more than 50% is remained as the char materials. So oil yield very low. And also uh, the cook problem is also severe. So many people want to uh, decrease the uh, residual amount of solid char obtained from the catalytic or pyrolysis of lignins. So I simply applied the high pressure reactions. So I loaded one milligram of lignin sample to the reactors and increased the pressure up to two megapascal. So I just do the one megapascal and do 1.5, two megapascal. So this indicates the reaction pressure in the tandem micro reactor is controlled by the, these reactions. So I introduced the helium, or this is misspelling, or hydrogen. So catalytic is loaded to the second reactors. And I monitor the continuous production with the increasing the temperatures. So this indicated the, the reaction temperature of post reactors. So on the helium atmosphere, this kind of a profile is generated. So this is, is the EGA analysis. It's a similar shape together with the uh, DTG curve of lignins. So it was generally decomposed at this temperature regions. However, if we apply the hydrogen, yes, the additional peak is appeared. And uh, if I increase the reaction pressures a little more like this, the peak height of second zone is increased. At the same time, we can check the residual char amount. So in this case, on the helium atmosphere, 40% was solid residue. However, if we applied the hydrogen and we increased the reaction pressures, the char amount was decreased down to 3 a 30 weight percent. So this indicated additional 10% can be converted to the gas or liquid. If we see the mass spectrum, you can see 78 and 91. So this is a typical mass of benzene. And this is that of tolerance. And also naphthalene and many kinds of aromatics is generated. So you can see this kind of reactions. Also, if I attach the separation column and uh, apply the almost the same uh, conditions, we can get this kind of uh, different chromatograms. So when we apply the, the 500 Celsius degree, so as we expected, most of the product is consisted with the panelic product productions. In case of 700 Celsius degree, the important thing is the reaction gas is hydrogen. And also the reaction pressure is 3.0 megapascal. So in that case, uh, I show. Yeah, this, almost this case. So this additional production was benzene and toluene and the xylene, ethyl benzene and xylene. So this is a polyaromatic products. So we can get the larger amount of target products. Even we didn't use any catalyst. The reaction condition is 700 Celsius degree and the char amount is very low compared to the 500 session. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. So also, I want to emphasize. So I think so many researchers who are doing the catalytic pyrolysis, they already using their own system. 
However, if you want to uh, make increase the experimental productivity, so in my case, my student can do the catalytic pyrolysis reaction more than 20 samples in one day. Yes, because we can use the tandem micro reactors and uh, uh, online analysis can be uh, achieved within one hour. So this is the key point of my presentations. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Kim Sun. So I really appreciate uh, the, the nice presentation. At least uh, we have got some good uh, take home message. I would say the cattle pyrolysis can reduce uh, the, I mean, the, the reduce the char, also give some value added products. And the synergic effect also with the uh, plastic and biomass can give better yield. And again, you can also consider high pressure uh, reaction for this uh, uh, reducing the char. That's also some interesting information. Okay, so I will try to go through the uh, questions what has been put in here. And yeah, afterwards, if any, any more question, uh, please feel free to uh, add in also. So in this point, I would like to introduce uh, our colleague, actually, Dr. Ichi Watanabe. So the, Dr. ichi -san, if you don't mind, please turn on your video. So Dr. Ichi Watanabe is our global marketing manager, also the vice president, vice president of uh, Frontier Laboratory. So he will be able to answer some of the hard work part today. So just to support and so on in that aspect. And so I will read the question. So uh, according to the question type, either uh, Dr. ichi -san or uh, uh, Kim San will answer those. Okay, so I'll go from tops. So, okay, so just give me. So the first question, if I remember correctly, that is from Dr. Lakshmi, and he wanted to know what is the accuracy of the temperature in the, the, the catalytic bed. Okay, so I think I saw Kim Son type one degree. So Ichisan, do you want to add anything there? Nope. Let's see. Okay, so I think it's a plus or minus one. Is it correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. So the next question coming from the Dr. Arshad. Uh, so the, actually, Dr. Arshad, thanks for joining. Uh, in, among the single and tandem micro reactor, which provides a better performance in terms of the product separation and analysis? Probably, I think, yeah, I think Dr. Ichisan can give some uh, explanation on this. Okay. Uh, there is no difference in between the tandem and single micro reactor in terms of the performance. Both are pretty much the same. But uh, hardware-wise, it's different. Tandem micro reactor consists of two reactors, whereas single micro reactor is only one reactor. So what is the difference? So for tandem micro reactor, what you do with first reactor is you vaporize or preheat your sample. Okay, that's the main main purpose. In the second reactor, you do the catalytic reaction. That's tandem micro reactor. For single micro reactor, you do the catalytic conversion in the reactor. So there is no place to pyrolyze your solid sample in the reactor. That means single micro reactor is for the analysis of gas and liquid sample only. That's the main difference. Yeah, I think yes. Thank you. So the next question also, I think this is from IVCR. So what is the maximum operating pressure? I think uh, he would have got some answer, but you can actually differentiate the two type of tandem reactor that we have. One is the normal one, the high pressure one. So, so uh, it is on, can you explain yes. briefly? Yeah. Okay, so uh, for the regular tandem micro reactor, the reaction pressure is depending on the GC pressure. So usually uh, up to, I think, one megapascal. That's the maximum. But that's not usable range. Usually people use, say, uh, DC pressure around 100, 100 kPa or something like that. And for high pressure reactor, the maximum pressure is 3.5 megapascal. OK, thank you. So the next question coming from uh, Subban Kumar. Is tandem reactor applicable for analysis of microplastic? Uh, Kim Sun actually answered uh, 
maybe you can just uh, explain a bit here so that because maybe is it a conversion or analysis so maybe you can clarify that part yeah kimsa i think so each is something so is better <laughs> yep so uh the <laughs> micro plastics analysis um pyrolyzer is the the best choice because standard micro reactor is for catalytic conversion or catalytic reaction so depending on your the purpose of the analysis you choose which instrument you are going to use yes okay thank you so okay that's one question from shuban again what is the difference between offline and online analysis maybe you have got some understanding from the presentation but we can actually uh, emphasize on that again Kim San, actually, you, you use both systems, so can you elaborate on that? So, I'm a little confused what is the meaning of online and offline systems, right? It indicated the EZA and the, the separation, uh, in situ or in situ. Uh, sorry, I couldn't understand the question. No, because maybe because they would have seen only the online analysis with the ega right so that means they may want to know how people are doing offline so that means it may be a separate uh, a standalone reactor ah. where they burn things and collect sample and inject ah, so that okay, be okay. offline so they may that that may be the question i think yeah. uh, okay i can answer now so uh, normally before the development of both tandem and the uh, pyrolyzer gcms people uh do the reactions as offline so normally they use the left size reactors and uh, they have to condense the product oil and they have to use the separated systems so they have to collect the oil and uh, by uh, injecting the system to the separated dishes but the problem is the uh, the weight Oh, I can say the yield of gas and the liquid and the solid was not easy because uh, it's very difficult to recover all of the gas products. Some heavy oil is condensed in the condenser, so we can recover. So if I compare the actual yield and the recovery yield of oil which can be collected to the system, the tandem microreactor is much higher. So that is one of the reasons the advantage of online analysis. And the most uh, important is, so my students really like this point. They can go home early because uh, if we apply the apply systems, so they have to provide a uh, much longer time so, for example, one or two experiments per day. However, if we do the online analysis, we inject the sample, GCMS detects all of the oil products at the same time. So, in that case, we can reduce the overall experimental time. So, that's the main advantage. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Yes, I think yeah, definitely. I also uh, I would say that the, the cost of your experiment, you know, if you do a batch reactor, then the amount of catalyst that you need also may be large. So definitely you can also do it a more cost effective manner if you do it in online and it's faster also. And the, the data, what you collect from a tandem can be easily scaled up for the uh, pilot or large scale. So that is what uh, some of the researchers have demonstrated. Okay, the, the next question coming from this Ankita, actually the two questions. One is uh, actually the sample size. I think Kim San already answered. Uh, then second one is that the solid can be in any form, right? The, the kind of a piece or powder. So any any comments on that? For homogeneity purpose, yeah, we have to ensure that the sample is homogeneous. So since we are here handling small amount, it is always advisable to take a powder form. But Kim San, can you comment on that? Okay, I think it's the uh, solid particle and powder form is uh, important. So many, for example, some scientists indicated the heat and the mass transfer is very important. 
to the pyrolysis of waste materials. So, however, our system is very small. So even you put one particle, one milligram, the result was almost similar together with the powder. So most important is as you, uh, the Katix indicated, uh, the homogeneity have to be considered and the water content also can be the reason for production of different results. So, so as a result, you can put any kind of sample. But the exact weight is very important because uh, the weight uh, product yield is calculated based on the uh, feedstock weight. So if you put a little more samples, so like a 10%, but it is promptly affect the final yield, product yield. So you need the exact balance. So also the weight. So we provide the maximum five sample cup size is 80 microliter. Yeah. Yeah. So you can put you some people can think, okay, I will put 30 milligram. Oh, it's enough. However, if you inject 30 microgram, so Kishimes will say. Oh, so many. Yeah. So I think I I recommend from 0 0.5 milligram the maximum to 3 milligram is acceptable. So even oh. that case, you have to increase the uh, spray ratio of GC in that something up to 300 to 1. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think that. So that now the next question is connected with this. So, so I think earlier you were trying to answer like if you have more sample, it may contaminate the column and also the detector. So that's a question. Would you recommend to use a silicon carbide bed in the second reactor, your catalyst, okay, to prevent any contamination? Any comment from Ichisan or Kim San? Uh, okay, I will say, so basically uh, the residual solid is remained in the sample cup after the reactions. So the contamination by the solid is not happened in our system, in the second reactions. However, the problem is some kinds of condensation reaction. So at the first time, this is the sample cup the light component is generated. However, during this atmosphere, leak condensation reactions can be happen. So some heavy components can be generated. So in my case, this is also target components. It's not contamination for the catalytic reactions. So as can as possible, you have to adjust to the reaction temperature to see all of the products that is emitted from the tender microwaves. So that's the reason why we applied the high uh, temperatures compared to the routine dish mass analysis. The inlet temperature is also 320. So some cases, 350 Celsius degrees can be applied. So if we want to prevent the contamination, so as you one of the researchers asked, you can use glass or and any kind of silica sand or something like this. It's also helpful, but uh, it's my private opinion. So please consider that components also can be our target product. Yeah, I think that that's a good answer, I think I'd say, yeah. So the next question coming from Prof. Vino, the Fisher Drops uh, work is interesting. So he wanted to know whether we have publicated any, any publication. I think Itisan has already answered uh, no publication yet, but we have some technical note, which we will be happy to share. Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay, so that's another question from uh, Adrina. How do you obtain the carbon yield from catalytic conversion of citrus peel in uh, this uh, SGM, is it uh, in, the, in the PYGCMS or did you use uh, FID? 
Uh, yes. Uh, as you, uh, the researchers ask it, I use the FID and the TCD also. So for the quantification of gas product, like uh, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, and the methane, ethane, from, two, from C1 to C4, so I use the TCD detector because uh, uh, CO and uh, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide can be monitored by the thermal TCD detector. Uh, sorry, by FID detectors. That's the reason for the TCD application. And also, in case of oil analysis, so normally from C5 to C100. <laughs> so uh, in that case, GCMS also can be uh, applied. However, sometimes the sensitivity of a mass detector is very uh, variable. Variable. So uh, FID uh, detection is more stable. So that's the reason why I use the FID. So as a result, you have to uh, you have to do F GCMST for the identification of all peaks. Then uh, you have to uh, see exact yield of gas product by GC TCD and the oil product by GC FI. So I think this is uh, ideal condition. And also, uh, I think each sound can provide some application notes because uh, uh, the Frontier of USC 18 also designed uh, the good systems. So we can operate to all detectors at the same time using uh, three-way split systems. So we have some kind of application. Also, the important thing is the operator have to purchase the standard. Otherwise, you cannot uh, calculate the carbon yield. So this is the most important, however, very difficult step. So in my case, I don't have enough money to <laughs> purchase all of oxygen-containing products. So I calculated the yield of BTS and the other polyanomatic hydrocarbon and the light uh, hydrocarbon and the CO CO2. So like a panel populars and the acetic acid, I didn't calculate the yield. Okay, yeah, so the, the next question also is connected. Can we get the product yield in percentage for oil, gas, and char after this application? Yes, yes. Yeah, so uh, maybe can you uh, explain a bit so that they know how that can be obtained? Yes, yes. So gas yield can be calculated by the quantification result using GCTCD detectors. Also, in case of oil, uh, it's difficult. So first, you have to measure the residual solid amount. So after the reaction, you have to collect the sample cup from the tender microwave. And by measuring the difference of the sample before, between before and after the reactions, you can calculate the weight of a solid residue. And now you know gas and the solid. By uh, subtract from 100% to gas plus and uh, solid, then the balance weight percent will be the liquid. So this is the basic concept for the for checking the gas and liquid and the solid. So sometimes, uh, in case of a catalytic conversion. The cocoa amount also can have to be calculated, but it is a little difficult. Okay. But it, it, but it is possible. Okay. Okay. That's good. So yeah. So if the answer is not uh, like uh, convinced, please write to us. So we will try to explain a little more details. So okay. I think that the last question is also very interesting. 
So how do we determine the uh, homogeneity of biomass plastic plants in co-pyrolysis? Because we are handling such a small quantity. So that's the first question. And second question is how can a catalyst separation be done to determine uh, coke formation in in situ catalytic copyrolysis? Yeah, I think both are uh, to be answered by uh, Kim San. How do we determine? Okay, so actually, it's uh, difficult to check the homogeneity when we see the sample, but we you can see the uh, homogeneity indirectly. So in my case, I perform the pyrolysis of biomass first. And uh, after the three times sample run, I compare the repeatability. So if the repeatability is almost the same, we can consider, okay, the sample has the homogeneity. And also the uh, solid sample, like a weight plastic is the same. However, the important step is the mixing technology. So you will put the biomass first to the sample cup and uh, the plastic additionally. And the mixing will be happen by your student or by yourself. So in my case, I have a problem, but my student can handle very well. So after you have to uh, use the, the very, like a sticks, one, uh, like a metal sticks. And you have to check some of the particles was uh, take out from the sample cup by your mixing step. So it had it can be uh, influenced uh, your analytical result. Yeah. So also, second question is, how can you check the situation? Ah, okay. Uh, for measure the weight of cook, so I didn't separate the catalyst from the catalyst phase because it's difficult. So, so I just, for example, this is the catalytic bed. Uh, before the reaction, I measured the total weight of this catalytic bed. And after the reactions, I just take off this catalytic bed from the reactors and decrease the temperature and measure the weight. So you put the catalyst amount is large, like a 10 milligram or 20 milligram, Cop co amount can be measured. And also, uh, some people want to send the uh, FTIR analysis and uh, PGA analysis, uh, uh, like me, oxidative EGA analysis, to check each kind of cook, to check the cocoa properties. So, in that case, uh, you can take up the catalyst using the the small load, metal load. You can collect it to the small GC buyers. Okay, I think uh, this is a good explanation. And uh, that brings us to the end of this Q&A session. So I think we have got some wonderful uh, questions from different participants. We really appreciate that. And please join me thanking uh, today's speakers like uh, Anusha San and Dr. Kim San also Ichi San for answering some of the questions. And at the last, I think uh, the, the, I also would like to thank all participants for taking time for today's webinar. I hope you have got some good take off message to create some new ideas for your research and applications. And any anything that you want to know more about our 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 uh, hardware part or the application please do contact us and we will try our best to uh, address your issues and see how we can be part of your research. Okay. And yeah, so I, as I mentioned my previous email, we will be having this webinar series and uh, some of you, uh, as you may know, that we have also tried to form a kind of a pyrolysis community in the Asia. Okay, like a pyro Asia, we have done our first conference in, in uh, last like December at uh, Madras. And we want to really keep our momentum. So I have been requesting some of the uh, uh, speakers uh, to really to contribute to our webinar. So uh, we uh, like uh, stay tuned, and we will be communicating those uh, information. And 
as a, as long as you see that topic is relevant and interest to you, please join and, and also be part of this community. So with that, I, can, I would like to thank you all, also the speakers. And uh, with that, uh, we will end this webinar session. Thank you all. Thank you.